90% of children are born to hearing families and only 10% are born to deaf families. It's important to teach your child ASL because it'll give them two languages, sign language and English. It needs to be understood that if you teach your child signs, it will not delay their speech. You can teach your child to talk and to sign and to read English, and they can have all three. My name is Dawn Flanagan. I'm the CEO and president of Global Interpreting Services in Michigan, and I'm also a certified, a nationally certified sign language interpreter. I would like to talk to you about how to read to deaf children. Reading to a child is so important. It improves their vocabulary. It improves their um, understanding of the world around them and how to interact with it. And it reduces frustration when they understand language and when they understand what's happening in the world around them. There are different strategies that you use when you are reading to deaf children. And although some of the strategies you could use with hearing children as well, but reading to children is truly an art form and it will help them uh, learn language. And if they're learning ASL and they see English on the book, then they're learning two languages their first language, which is American Sign Language, in English, which would be their second language, and they're going to need it for school. So I love this book for babies. So it's Baby Signs, and you can find this on the internet, um, probably Barnes & Noble, and you want to start as soon as possible um, because it has some great pictures, and it has an explanation of how to make the sign, and it has the most common signs for very, very young children, for young children. So first, let's just talk about a couple of these signs for, for babies. So the first sign is milk and water. So we're going to do those signs first. So milk and water. Now, water is a really hard sign for little children because they don't have the dexterity to do this. So you're going to accept whatever if they just do water or water, whatever they get near their mouth, you know, or near their face, because they don't, again, have the dexterity to know to get it right on the mouth. They might do it, you know, somewhere on their cheek or on their nose. It's very important that you accept the sign that the child can give you with whatever mobility that they have at the moment. And then a couple more signs, more and all done. Those are really common first signs, more, and all done. Now you're gonna accept, you know, more or more or more, um, all done, might be just one-handed or two-handed or just something like this. Accept that and understand that that's the first way that your baby is communicating with you. And honestly, when you use sign language with infants right from the get-go, it has been proven that they'll have their first sign at around seven or eight months, whereas the first word, is quite a bit longer, like a year and a half, two years maybe even. So, and they're putting two words together, making two word sentences um, just after they turn one. So during that first year where, you know, spoken language babies may not use a two word sentence until later. And that's because they can use their hands better than they can their, their mouth and their tongue learning how to make those, those um, sounds. Now we're gonna talk about reading a book to children. It's really important when you're reading a book to a deaf child that you show the signs, but you make sure that they understand the English on the page. Many deaf parents will expand on the story when they're reading to their deaf children. So first, you want to read it a few times so that they understand the story as it is. Then you can expand on it, like um, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. So Goldilocks and the Three Bears. And you're talking about, you know, Goldilocks goes in and sees bowls of porridge. Now, you can say that and then expand on it. You know, Goldilocks went into the house and maybe she shouldn't have, but she decided that she wanted to go in. So there's things that you can do to expand and give them more language while they're enjoying a story. So, you know, Papa Bear's bowl was too hot and Mama Bear's bowl was too cold, but baby bear's bowl was just right. Now you wanna make sure that you give a lot of animation, um, make it enjoyable for the child, engage them. You can engage them with your eye gaze, make sure that, that they know that you know, you're interacting with them. You can use eye gaze to get them to look at the book. So you're looking at them and then you look at the book 
it's important to point at the book when you're talking about the different things that are going on. So you can sign it and then say, see here, and here's the words that go with it. And that way they, they attribute the English words to the signs, and then they see the story in the pictures on the pages. As you'll notice, um, even with more, usually you're going to talk about more when they're eating. And so here you have a little baby, and that's why I love this book, because it's, it's a baby, and so they can relate to it. And they're saying more when they have food in front of them. So they may not fully understand this whole concept of eating, and I'm sitting in this height chair, and I'm eating food. But they'll kind of get the gist of it that, you know, this is when you would use the word more when you have food. So you could expand on this when you're going through the book with them. You could say more. Do you want more? And if you have the, the book, you know, you could say more food. Do you, do you want and then cookies or whatever cookies, whatever they have in front of them. You know, you can you can help expand that way. Things that they like to eat. So you can expand and, you know, do you want more milk? You could do those kinds of things and, and show them a milk, you know, an actual glass of milk. You don't just have to use the book. You can use, you know, actual glass of milk with the book and the, the milk and then more. And you can actually hand it to them so that they get the concept of what all these signs are. It's also important to make sure that they understand the story. So you've read the story a few times and you're talking about whatever's going on in the story, relate it to the real world, relate it to real life happenings, um, help them understand more signs by doing that and concepts by doing that. So they have the book, they see how it's related to the real world. You can even just expand on the story. Why would someone go into a house? Why would someone want, you know, porridge that's that's cool instead of cold or hot. You can expand on all of these things and really have a great time interacting with your child while reading. So it's important, again, let's go over it. You need to sign. You need to show them the English in the book. You need to point out things in the pictures. You need to engage with them and you know look them in the eye and, and let them ask questions. Part of engaging too is if, if they're tired of the book, maybe try a new book. And if you don't know a lot of sign language, go to YouTube. You can find all sorts of stories that are um, in sign language that you can learn the signs yourself and then apply them to your reading time with your child. So find a book that they're interested in that they want to um, read. Create a conversation with your child. That's something that you can do while you read. So you can ask them, you know, do you, what, go, what happens next? Oh, now what happens? And have them tell you, and then you can see if they're learning the signs and if they know the signs and if they're doing them correctly. You know, again, when they're little, you want to accept whatever they give you, but then eventually you want to help them understand how to do it correctly. So grab a book, grab your child and enjoy.